Hi, Shalom. This video contains mentions of racism, hate crimes, and KKK activity. Viewer discretion is advised. Any use of outdated language is for historical purposes only and does not reflect my own views. All right, today I'm going to be discussing the film Black Klansman, the true story of an investigation that took down a KKK chapter in Colorado in the 70s. If you don't know much about the background of the KKK, it might be helpful to watch the series I did on KKK history. I'll link those videos down below. Oh my gosh, this film was the epitome of a doozy. I filled a whole page of notes in the first half hour of the film. There are colorful metaphor metaphors and smart ass commentary all over my notes. <laughs> this is the true story of a black cop, Ron Stallworth, who led the aforementioned investigation. He worked with a white cop to infiltrate the group. The white cop joined the group pretending to be Stallworth and Stallworth would talk to them on the phone. The first thing I want to mention is that these KKK members, like many racist white people, had this idea in their head of good Negroes. This was basically code for not making waves. A big part of the civil rights movement at this time was Black people reconnecting with their African heritage. They would take on African names, maybe wear traditional clothing or headscarves, etc. Choosing their own names was particularly significant because slaves were given the surnames of the slave owners, which is why so many Black historical figures had white sounding surnames. Oh my gosh, watching this film was such a crazy experience. The only thing historical about it was the fashion, music, and cars. Ron Stallworth is still living. He's about my parents' age. Everything else is still happening today. There's a misconception that white cops shooting unarmed black people is a new phenomenon. There is nothing new about any of this. It was always happening. What's new is increased means of documentation through smartphones, internet, etc. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we don't have accurate statistics of black casualties at the hands of cops going further back, both because the technology didn't exist yet and because of white police departments not giving a shit about keeping accurate records. One of the most eerie things about this film was that a lot of the rhetoric and slogans were exactly the same as what we're hearing today, particularly Black Lives Matter and Make America Great Again. Okay, I'm going to stop here and vet, um, vent about something that has pissed me off for years. You can't make something great again if it was never great to begin with. This country has never been great for anyone who isn't a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and male and straight and not disabled. We could make this country greater, absolutely, but there is no making it great again. There's a scene where Ron is chatting with someone. I think it was the white cop he was working with. They were talking about David Duke, who later ran for president in the 80s. Ron said, America would never elect someone like David Duke as president of the United States. I genuinely believed the same thing before the 2016 election. <laughs> Can't say that anymore. I also want to take a minute to mention that the KKK was also anti-Catholic. There's a long history of anti-Catholic prejudice in the US, which is on the long list of things I want to make videos about. 
I mention this because in the film, the word genuflect is used as a slur. For anyone who doesn't know, genuflecting is a Catholic tradition where you kneel before the cross in the church and make the sign of the cross like so. The whole history of racism in the U.S. makes my blood boil, but there was a particular scene that made me scream into a pillow after the film was over. All the yahoos are gearing up to crash an event held by Black college students, and they are laughing and cheering while watching Birth of a Nation. <sighs> It was like a sinister version of kids giggling while watching a Disney movie. Um, in case you haven't seen my ser series on the KKK, Birth of a Nation was a horribly racist film that came out in 1914 and was a huge, huge factor in the KKK resurgence in the 1910s and 20s. The scene flipped back and forth between the student meeting and this little Yahoo pep rally. Um, the Black students have a guest speaker, a 70-something gentleman who had been friends with Jesse Washington, a mentally disabled teenager who was lynched a couple years after Birth of a Nation came out. I'm not even going to go into the details because watching this film and researching the lynching gave me panic attacks, but I'll post the Wikipedia page um, below. Be warned, it is absolutely brutal. Karma better get every single one of these yahoos, I can tell you that. The concept of a literal hell doesn't exist in Judaism, but while I was watching, I was thinking, can we create one for racists who are just asking for it? <sighs> And this made me think about what I'm always saying today, about how people like Ruby Bridges and Ron Stallworth are still living and their childhoods weren't that long ago from a historical standpoint. This film takes place in 1973, so only 60 years or so after Jesse Washington's death. That's roughly about the amount of time between the time of filming this video and Ruby Bridge is going to the white school. The movie ends with real footage of the Charlottesville massacre, which really hammers home the point that none of this is ancient history. This is hands down the hardest video for me to produce so far. And Boy in the Striped Pajamas was hard, so that is saying something. Let me tell you, I did not want to have to do this video, but with everything going on, it's extremely important. All right. Thanks so much for sticking with me on this one. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Bye.